It's time for a bit of royal news. Buckingham Palace have refused to comment on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's near catastrophic car chase through New York City last week, with the couple's unofficial spokesman saying he's shocked over King Charles's failure to contact the couple. Joining me from London is commentator Esther Cuckoo. Esther, thank you very much for your time. I want to ask you about Omid Scobie. In just a handful of years, he's gone from an entertainment reporter no one's heard of to being the unofficial spokesman for Harry and Meghan. Last week, he even appeared at the Royals' phone hacking trial in London and Scobie denied being a mouthpiece for the couple, said he had no vested interest. Now Scobie is not only the co-author of a book about Harry and Meghan, Finding Freedom, but he also was the first to report the claims that Harry and Meghan were involved in the car chase last week. He seemed to have their talking points before anyone else. Who is this bloke? Yes. And does he have some sort of a vested interest in the couple? Uh, his rise to fame has been uh, quite remarkable. This is someone who, I mean, he, he always has been in sort of royal reporting uh, territory. He was he worked for Harper's Bazaar and Us Weekly. Uh, but his, his proximity to the Sussex is quite curious. I suspect that the reason why uh, he, they brought him on board, uh, quote unquote, is because of his experience in royal reporting. He understands tonality. He understands how to build a brand within a brand, um, so to speak. And his proximity to the royal family means that he understands the nuances. Unfortunately, uh, his his proximity uh, to them, the Sussexes, hasn't really paid off in the way that it should because their popularity is still very low. Their, their brand is, is quite uh, unsalvageable at this point. They, they've become effectively a laughing stock. Um, but I think it's, it's quite odd to say that he has no vested interest in the couple. Of course he does. He has, has the inside scoop. He co-wrote their, their book, Finding Freedom, uh, which was a tone-deaf winch fest. He clearly does have a vested interest in at least maintaining close proximity to the couple. Um, so that's something that I don't think can be disputed. Yeah, it's hard to see why people who want to leave behind being royals need themselves a um, person from royal reporting on the books. Esther, just quickly, I want to ask you about this incredible move by a theatre in East London. It's been accused of setting a dangerous precedent after urging white people to stay away from a play so that the audience can be free from the white gaze. White people have been warned against going to the show, which explores African-American history on July 5, so it can create, quote, a safe private space for an all-black identifying audience to look at race-related issues. What's been the reaction to this? Some people seem to have hit out and they're saying it's racist, but what are you hearing on the ground? Well, it's clearly racist. Most people have uh, had a negative reaction to this. I find it interesting that they, they, <laughs> they said they wanted a black identifying audience, which in theory means any white person can go and identify as a black person, um, a la Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have a friend, Russell, who actually ended up buying all of the tickets um, for this uh, theatre event. And he's, and I, I kid you not, he is planning on filling the front row with albinos. Um, so he clearly is <laughs> taking, taking the joke back to them. But it's clearly very racist and it's very distasteful. <laughs> Good to see the Brits still have a sense of humour. Thank you, Esther. I appreciate your time.